Ms. Maya. I'm a student at CSUMP and a service learner for the Monterey County Free Libraries. For the month of November, we have been posting and highlighting famous Indigenous authors. And for today's book chat, we'll be going over Heartberries, written by Therese Marie Mayute. Heartberries is a very poetic memoir and it follows Therese uh, living in a small reservation in uh, Canada and then eventually making her way down to the American Southwest. We get to see her kind of just go through like this whole character arc as she, a native underrepresented woman, um, deals with just life and, you know, mental illness, which is a uh, I don't know it makes it makes the book extremely unique because we don't see a lot of this stuff um out in the media um she also shares with us some very like intimate and like very small details that would often go like overlooked that just really helps establish like a, a very personal connection with her and the reader despite the fact that the reader might not have experienced the exact same stuff as she did it kind of just shows how vulnerable this this story is so i will now um read you guys the synopsis for heartberries heartberries is a powerful poetic memoir of a woman's coming of age on the seabird island indian reservation in the pacific northwest having hospitalized and facing a dual diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder and bipolar 2 disorder therese marie mayute is given a notebook and begins to write her way out of trauma the triumphant result of is Heartberries, a memorial for Mayut's mother, a social worker and activist who had a thing for prisoners, a story of reconciliation with her father, an abusive drunk and a brilliant artist who was murdered under mysterious circumstances, and an elegy on how difficult it is to love to someone while dragging the long shadows of shame. Mayut thrusts the, lead, the reader to understand that memory isn't exact, but melded into imagination pain, and what we can bring ourselves to accept. Her unique and at times unsettling voice graphically illustrates her mental state. As she writes, she discovers her own true voice, seizes control, control of the story, and in so doing, reestablishes her connection to her family, to her people, and to her place in the world. So my favorite part of this memoir is just the writing style. It really this is uh this is my youth's debut book and it really just i think it went off on a pretty good start because it really encompasses my youth's true writing style potential it, it is it's really good it's i really like it i like um i guess the, the best way to describe the writing style is that it's very it's contrasting so you have like these very like like flowy nice and graceful sentences and then you also have these very rough and, and raw sentences that are not entirely clear but if you kind of just look a little bit you kind of you kind of get an understanding and I really like that and I like how that she has like this wordplay where something seemingly bad will turn into something good and vice versa um and I I have these two examples from her her couple quotes from her books her book um, the first one is, I think self-esteem is a white invention to further separate one person from another. It asks people to assess their values and implies that people have worth. It seems like an identity capitalism. And then the second quote is, I can't believe my reserve of water. From my nose and eyes, I have dormant fluid in my body. Every woman does. I don't know if I'm a cavern or a river. Once you said I was a geyser, a hole in the ground, bursting. So I really like her, her wordplay and just like how the way that uh, the best way is how I'm trying to say is like the the way that she go she goes to a conclusion or the way that she describes something I really like that um and yeah so I I definitely recommend Heartberries if you haven't read it already thank you guys so much for tuning in and thank you for watching mm -hmm.